Okay, chapter 20. Um, 20-1 20 is talking about determining the quantity of merchandise inventory. So our first learning objective is you need to be able to prepare a stock record. Um, why merchandise inventory is, is important. This is huge um, for merchandising businesses because it helps managers to really figure out how much they need to order, what the quantity they need, how much variety they need, and then the prices that they're going to charge or prices of merchandise that they're going to buy. Um, allows current assets and retained earnings to be correctly reported on the balance sheet, and it ensures that gross profit and net income are reported correctly on the income statement. The most efficient quantity of inventory, that's one of the reasons that merchandise inventory is important. Um, we're going to talk about two different things. Um, when we have more than um, the quantity that we need and when we have less. So if a merchandising business actually ends up having more quantity of inventory than they need, what they're doing is they're going to have to spend more money for the store and then also they have to house that um, merchandise so they need warehouse space as well um, that capital could be invested in other assets than what they're investing it in it also requires a business to spend more money for expenses such as maybe taxes and insurance premiums which increase with the cost of merchandise inventory the other thing is is the more we buy of that product the longer we might end up having that product. And then that product might become obsolete or unsaleable. Um, just meaning that people won't use that product anymore. And so now we're left over with a product that we can't sell at all um, because we bought too much. Now, like I said, the other side of that is not having enough quantity. Um, if we don't have enough quantity, then we have the um, option of losing out on sales uh, because people will come in to buy that product and we don't have it and now we've lost the sale. Um, also, when we're buying merchandise, if we're buying a small amount of merchandise um, from a wholesaler, we end up probably paying a higher price for those smaller quantities. Usually what wholesalers do where we buy our merchandise from is the more we buy, the less we pay per unit. Methods used to determine the quantity of merchandise inventory. We have two different methods. We have periodic inventory and then we have perpetual inventory. Period periodic inventory is when um, merchandise is evaluated at the end of the fiscal period. And then perpetual is merchandise inventory determined by keeping continuous record of increases, decreases, and then the balance on hand. Um, you might hear perpetual, um, perpetual inventory referred to as book inventory because simply we're keeping track of it in a book. Um, periodic inventory sometimes is also called physical inventory um, because what they will do is they will actually go out and count, physically count the inventory that is on hand. Now, um, an inventory record is the form that we're gonna use during a physical inventory to record information about each item of merchandise on hand. This is an example of what an inventory record might look like. Um, main things that we're going to have is we're going to have that stock number and then the description of it. Um, we're going to have how many numbers of units we have on hand. So that is that physical count on hand. The unit price then of those and then the total price. So that would just be simply taking the number of units times that unit price to get your total cost. Now, some businesses keep inventory records that show continuously the quantity on hand for each kind of merchandise. So they show you like day to day what the inventory is. Um, a stock record is a form you to use to show the kind of merchandise quantity received, quantity sold, and then the balance on hand. Um, a separate stock record is prepared for each kind of merchandise on hand. So we're gonna have different stock record sheets for each product that we have. Um, and then a stock ledger is simply a file of all of the stock records of all merchandise on hand. Um, so that's like, if you, if you want to think of it, this would be like the big book. The stock ledger would be like the book that contains all of the pages, which would be the stock records.
Okay, so here's um, just another example of a stock record. Now notice on this one, we over here on the left have our increases, on the right we have our decreases, and then we have our balance. So we can see on October 10th, here's what we sold. We sold two of our beach totes. Then on November 11th, we bought, here's our purchase invoice, we bought 20. And then we're seeing here November 12th, 29th, and 6th, we sold two, four, and one. Here, we're keeping that continuous balance of how much we have after each um, increase or decrease to that stock. Now, perpetual inventory a lot of times is used by a computer. Um, technology has made it super easy for us to keep track of some of that. Um, a lot of times you'll see that point of sales terminal, um, which is more than just a cash register. It is a computer system that keeps track of what we are selling. Um, and to do that, they will use the UPC. I'm sure you've heard of UPC codes before, universal product codes. Um, and really, that's just than a computerized stock ledger. Um, so everything is computerized for those stock records. Number one, identify four reasons why a merchandise inventory that is larger than needed may actually de decrease the net income of a business. If we have more merchandise than we need, um, it requires the business to spend more money on expensive store and warehouse space. Um, it also is going to use capital that could have been invested into other assets that would earn a profit. Um, too much inventory requires that a business spend money for expenses. We talked about taxes and insurance premiums to increase um, or which increase with the cost of merchandise inventory. And then also, if we have too much inventory, um, that inventory might end up being obsolete or unsaleable. Number two, when, a f when are physical inventories normally taken? Normally, a business will do a physical count of physical inventory at the end of a fiscal period. Number three, how do inventory levels affect the period a business selects for its fiscal year and why? What we're going to want to do or what a business would want to do is um, have their fiscal period end when inventory is normally going to be lower, when they're going to be at a minimum, um, because that's going to take less time to count a smaller inventory, so it takes up less of their time um, to do that physical um, inventory. And then number four, how is the accuracy of a perpetual inventory checked? Usually with a perpetual inventory, they are going to check to make sure that the, they have their books right. Um, so a customary practice is that they would take a fisc physical inventory at least once a fiscal period. Um, so the physical inventory results are then compared to what they have for perpetual inventory, inventory rec records to make sure that they are on the same page. You can now watch the 20-1 Work Together video.